Hey guys, we got a pack R. That's a uh, EPA 13, and it was throwing. I'm trying to remember the number on the code P O O 94, and that's basically a low rail pressure code. And here are the new pumping units. Well, they're not new; they're remands from Peterbilt. Uh, I got two of them. So I checked them the other day when he had this fault code. And if you read the service manual on those codes, you're supposed to check that and I think from 68 degrees to 228 degrees Fahrenheit, the whatever the side of the block the temperature is, they're supposed to be you check the check first thing I tell you to do is check the this with an ohm meter, and they're supposed to have point like 0 0.67 to 0 0.94 ohms in that in that temperature range. Well I had like 2.6 ohms on one. And the other one kept, that was weird, the other one kept reading zero. I don't know why. But we're gonna, we're gonna pull it out and check them before. I'm pretty certain. I mean, I know that one kept, I, I mean, I kept, and they're so easy to get to, you know. So we gotta figure out with this thing how, I need to get this line out of my way. And I just dread taking it off because every time I mess with one of these pack cars, and all their plastic shit all over everything and all their little plastic retaining clips always break and I'm gonna put the wires over here so I need to kind of get this man I'm just scared to death to pop that damn thing off of there let me get a screwdriver or something uh Walk back over to my truck. He's loaded and it stinks. It's full of chicken shit. If it ain't chicken shit, it sure has hen house ways about it. Uh, let's get the screwdriver. Let's see if we can get the clip off without breaking it. Which I don't seem to have that much luck with that sort of thing. Duke, hey, come on, bub. Get over here. You cannot be over there. You know better than that. You're the old dog and you're getting complacent. Come on. Come on, Bubba. I'll put you in the cab of the pickup. That way, we don't have to worry about you. Come on. Come on, Bubba. You don't need to be out there. See, Josie's just being in the cab all nice and pretty. Sitting there all nice and pretty. Come on. Oh, the old timer. He ain't getting any lighter, that's for damn sure. Okay, I unbolted this little coil, whatever the hell it does, going into the fuel filter housing. And now I can... I think we'll get this other bolt loose. Don't take with these pack cars and these pumping units. I've learned something very valuable. Is just back out the bolts away. Don't take them completely out because if they're on the high load part of the cam, she's gonna come out of there with a Thor tie and tear shit up. Listen, I've done it. I've done it and screwed it up before, so. Now I can get on that damn thing there. There we go. Let's see if I can get a bar under it or something and get the pop loose, maybe. Okay, what do I need to be prying at? moved it doesn't act like it's got a big amount of tension on it or anything stuff they just don't make it to work I can access it without tearing half the truck apart or breaking something trying to get to it so you don't have to tear it apart I mean it's just a pain in the ass hey guys while I'm sitting here struggling with this uh, this uh, pumping unit trying to get it out thought I would update you on the status of the last video you guys saw me where if you didn't see the video what I did is I had a ISX Cummins that I had 
VGT actuator uh, up normal update rate codes for and what that means the CAN bus isn't something either the power and ground of the actuator uh, or the CAN bus the CAN high and low uh, circuit is faulty so anyways and it's not communicating with the ECM so anyways we wired that yesterday and Kevin ran like I think he hauled three loads he ran it about maybe 15 16 hours a day and and uh, didn't have it happen one time so uh, if you want more info on that there's a way more in-depth explanation on the previous video on my channel so anyways so so far so good I thought I'd let you guys know uh, about that I think maybe we're Oh, man, we're hitting this wiring harness. You know, I'm going to have to be honest with you. I've never had to change one on an EPA 13, and it's kind of looking like... Kind of looking like you got to remove the entire wiring harness. I don't know. That's pretty wild if that's the case. Man, I thought I could get past that. How do you get past the wiring harness? I mean, you gotta un take the entire wiring harness out of the truck so you can get that out of there? Well, I'll tell you what, these pack are the DAF engine. It's a DAF engine. Them Europeans, they, they, they got some genius shit going on. Some real genius shit going on with these pack our pieces of fucking junk i'll tell you that these things are the biggest piece of shit you ever seen everything about them just garbage just absolute garbage there's just nothing good about them i mean you could just keep trying and trying to find something it's just not there you know Once I get the flange past the, uh, get that flange past there. I think maybe. And the cloud come over the sun there. Colder than shit. Get your ass back there somewhere, you son of a bitch. Jesus. this line like I told you I'm gonna have to go get an end wrench there's a hold down bracket here that's right I'm gonna have to get that line out further or something I mean I can't get the the, the plug on the actual pumping unit past the line Arr! wait maybe I got it now the ear is hitting it guys we just got this back one out and i i noticed when i as soon as i pulled it out where's it at look at that it broke there's one piece so i pulled the cam follower out look at the cam follower on it now i'm wondering what the other one looks like i mean the other one this one's not broke 
Uh, let's go get the other follower out. And then we need to look at that cam. I need to get my uh, bore scope and look down in there and see what that cam looks like. Come on. That one's not wanting to come out of there. Okay. Magnet's not doing the trick there. I don't want to come out. Hmm. Let's go get the bore scope. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get that one to come out. This opened up. Take a look down in there and see what we see on that camshaft. And. See what we see here. Okay, what do we what do we got here? Cam screwed up. Cam is screwed up in it. Not good, not good. I gotta call him this is not good news for him. All right, guys, I was on the phone with the owner of the truck there. He's got two of these, uh, and he, he hates them, absolutely hates them. He says, I, he said, what are you thinking time-wise? I said, you're probably 40, 50 hours. And he goes, to pull a cam? I said, rear gear train, dude, rear gear train engine. Uh, I mean, you got to pretty well gut this engine to get that cam out of there. It's a push rod engine. That's the other th bad thing. And I remember a while back, I had made a comment in one of my videos about, you know, one of these pack cars is working around. And, you know, and, and that's the thing, though. I had made a comment about how bad, why would you still have a push rod engine in production? You know, everybody has went to overhead cam, and some knucklehead got on the comment section, oh, push rod engine's the only way to go. I could take an E-model cat or an ISX Cummins and have the cam out of that son of a gun. I can have a cam out of an ISX Cummins in probably four hours. This one here, we're going to have to pull the engine clear out of it because the cam comes in from the back. It's a rear, it, there's no front gear train. It's a rear gear train engine. And then the head's got to come off because it's a push rod engine. You got to get the cam followers out. It's just. It's just a gargantuan piece of shit's what it is. So, I gotta figure out now, guys, so I'll probably end the video here because I'm gonna have to figure out, um, I gotta air it up and uh, get the trailer unhooked and I guess the trailer's gonna be stuck right where it's at. I'll get some, I got some disc blades. I'll throw under the landing gear and get the trailer unhooked um i need to air it up and get the suspension up put the landing gear down then dump the air on the suspension and then drag the truck out from underneath it i wish i would have known god i wish i would have known this was gonna be like this before this all went down and it's good walking through the trailer so it's got to drop the system to it so we gotta get the uh, quick couplers and get the hydraulics and i'm glad this thing's kind of downwind from me this thing is loaded with chicken shit right now that ought to smell real good by the time the week's up or whatever we want to get this thing back together i told the owner i says do you hate these piece of shit pack cars yet and he goes yes he said, I just can't, he says, I cannot tell you since we bought these two trucks, the amount of money that these things have cost me.
He said they're always broke down. And he said that it never leaves a shop for less than $10,000. He said every damn thing that every part you buy on them is astronomically expensive. He said they're just junk. All right, well, guys, that's probably all the videoing I'm going to do on this project because I thought I was just going to do a quick video on uh, changing a couple pumping units, but obviously that's not going to happen. It's going to be way more detailed than that. I got to get it drug around there. I got a cab over. I'm trying to think what I could do. I got a cab over truck in there that I need to work on too. Um, let's see. What's this thing? Ah. I'm probably not going to get it even get it in there today. I'm going to have to get my wife down here to help me get this thing in the shop. I'm not going to be able to get her in there today, I don't think. I might take a... Take a tape. Wonder how high them stacks are. This one doesn't seem to be as high as most of them are. I might take a tape. I might go in this bay right here, but where the hell am I gonna park my truck at? <laughs> it's running out of room to put shit in here, you know what? This one feller with this retrofit, I kinda wish he'd bring his wiring harness and his parts up i kind of need to get that one going and kind of get it out of here and make some room in here well i'll tell you what i'm gonna do i might pump the cab back down on that old freight liner right there and then i could probably i might be able to clean this all out right here and then get that truck just nose it in here or something maybe i don't know I don't know, we'll see.